<laughs> yeah, I uh, for me now it's I'm starting to notice I'm old because of m- music's finally loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know that was going to happen where yeah. music was just going to get loud out of nowhere. Well, we could wait. Let's that's something we oh, can. Oh, we just talk by about. the way. We just, oh, this is it. We just roll. Okay. I don't. I you know why? Because I didn't. <laughs> Does that mean? Because I know you like Metallica, right? Yeah, Metallica's old. I know, we but lose. do you listen to Metallica on like four? And then if someone <laughs> turns it up to six, you're like, all right, let's just... I don't think Metallica was meant to be played loud. Uh, okay, <laughs> this is studying music. I don't need it like this. You know what? Let's bend it like that. Okay. Because your camera's right there. Oh, how about, it's all like about that? Clips. It's all about clips, how about dude. about that? Dude, we just got these arms, so you can bend them all over the place. Right. Uh, we went and saw Metallica this summer at MetLife. I went with the whole old Bonfire crew. Uh-huh. They're old. The They're Bonfire like, Crew or Metallica? All of us. All of us. <laughs> top to bottom. Yeah. They are... It was the first time I was, like, bummed out. I saw Iggy Pop when he went on tour with Josh Homme and Queens of the Stone mm-hmm. Age. They were young around him. Yeah. So he could do old man shit and still look cool. Okay. All of Metallica So is do old. you think that... Being surrounded by younger pers- people makes you look cooler as an old person or it makes you look older as an old person? I think if done right, makes you look cooler. Iggy Pop, worst example for this, because Iggy Pop is an alien he, he, and his body is like, he's it's still crazy. Ripped. I know. Well, he was like walking with like a, like a, like a real third world health problem. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> like a real like oh they don't have they don't have the only people in the world that get it are people in the third world and Iggy Pop yeah. Iggy Pop's like they said I ain't seen a hit like this it's a Guatemala mudslide <laughs> he's, it's like, got, he's like you can only get this in a certain river yeah. or from living like I did last week because they think it's because of the toxic water I drank in the 70s it's nuts dude the thing that's making me laugh online is younger people are calling boomers they're saying they all have lead poisoning. Ah, that's funny. I haven't it, seen that. It's so that's funny. That's great. It's something that like young people are doing with their like these lead poison brains. Oh, that's great. Like, I didn't even know young people still knew about lead poisoning because I we got we were supposed to get rid of all the lead. But that's what's funny is we cleaned it up and then they probably like read about it. And yeah. Like, Wait, hold up. There's this house is full of lead. Yeah. And now they hate the boomer generation for ruining the economy. Yeah, and everything. yeah, yeah. And, and, and like, now there's lead in our paint. And now they're like, and you guys had lead in your, well, there it is. Yeah. And the boomers are like, I don't think you know what you're <laughs> talking about. But there was a study where they like looked up that there was lead in gasoline. Oh. And it made people crazy. There was something about gasoline that changed in you the know 70s. You sucks? I, f- I love the smell of gasoline, and I huff it whenever I'm at the gas station so hard. Yeah. I mean, Stress Factory, for those of you who don't know, it's in New Brunswick. Yeah. Right outside It's an hour the from the city. It's a very easy... It's Road a, gig. It's a good club. Yeah. It's close to the city. So you get the Attells, Patrice's... It was just Tough Crowd. It was basically Tough Crowd. That's insane. So I saw Patrice... He would do two weekends a year, so I would see six. I'd see like ten to twelve hours of Patrice a year. Crazy. I would see the and, same of Attel. Also, you're also getting Geraldo, Geraldo Ted Alexandro, DePaulo, what was the Norton, best, what Colin. Was the, what was the best weekend of shows you saw someone have? I'm always fascinated yeah, by this. Yeah, that's a good question. Like who was who had like the five? Because usually Cause there's different criteria. So yeah. like who killed the hardest for five shows? I'll never forget thinking so killing with the crowd was probably um and i remember thinking this at the time because i was like i was like it sounds like a black club in here and there's like five black people (laughs) can i tell you that is just that was the thought i had in 2000 comedy yeah that is one time joe list and i were opening for bobby kelly Uh uh-huh and we were like He's a black comic. Like yeah. he's killing. Oh like yeah, he's, he kills like a black comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's gotta um, wipe his head and be like, "You might." Yeah, you fucking. I know he's know got a towel. He about. never did get a towel though. He should have had a towel. Who? How did Bobby Kelly never have a towel? You know what? He's gonna who, be on. He's of all the guys who didn't need a towel that how, had towels. We got a. Bobby's gonna be on the episode on this podcast next yeah. week. First question is, why did you never have a towel? I'm gonna I'm gonna get him a towel that says Bobby on it and dude. bring it for him. It says, dude. Just should it say dude? Yeah, it just okay. should say dude. Um, Bobby a dude towel. He's like, ah, dude. You know what, dude? You yeah. know what, dude? It's just <laughs> fucking. So who? Okay, so um, and Bobby killed. You know, and, and like there were a lot of guys, and there were road guys that would kill. Like <sighs> like Joey Cola was very would crush. Um, yeah, you I don't know if you know who Joey Cola is. When I when where I started, 
in Tucson, mm-hmm. the road, it was j- just those road guys that killed. Oh, yeah. So you just saw the road guys. I never got the like A plus guys. They never went there or they didn't no, kill no, like that? No, they just oh. didn't go. Right, it right, right. It was a C room. Yeah. So oh, you yeah. would like go. No, the only like other types of guys we ever got was features would, would be okay. like the B guys, you know. Yeah. But um, occasionally there'd be like the railroad dogs that were like. That's what I saw. Barely killing still. But you dude, know what I mean? You'd see them in the C room where they didn't see any good comedy. And oh man! Were, it, oh, you, crushing! Might as well be '88 again. Yeah, <laughs> these guys are just—it's '88 and 2004. It's these like guys, jokes that are on like bumper stickers, yeah, like I've, and have been for 20 years. I've eaten popsicles where the reveal has been the same <laughs> as, as this guy. As this so, guy say. so I've I've avoided the question for so long. But basically, the answer is I remember in the moment thinking this is the loudest I've ever heard it in here, and it was Jim Norton. Yeah. It was Norton, Jim Norton 2000? in the middle of O and A and the crowd was all there to see Jim. And I, what I was, do you know what it was? It was feet stomping and people smashing and hitting the table. Cool. That's how, yeah. that's what, that's what like kicked it up to 11. Yeah. Cause like a lot of guys, there'd be roaring laughter. There'd be applause, but when they're stomping and hitting the table, yeah. that's, that was Jim Norton. And he was, he almost, the only thing to make it an actual black room was, uh, it would have been if they stood up and walked away from the table and came back. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they couldn't, cause they just couldn't. And they, they can't, they can't they physically can't, you know, it's funny. White people started saying I can't, yeah. but black I, people at first to not, Yeah, like, I'm just not. <laughs> they were like, I'm we can't, we can't, we can do but it. But they would, they didn't say it. They would just get up and walk away. That is fucking crazy. Yeah. Five. I mean, <clears> Jim Norton, but the, I want to also list the biggest killers yeah. because you know, it's, it's different criteria. So he was so hot at the time and with that crowd that like, and he delivered, it and he, and he was like peak doing what he was doing yeah so it was i was in, I, in that at that time i'm in high school 2000 yeah was a year it, yeah about, it was like 2000 2001 i was 18 yeah i was into opie and anthony mm-hmm. and i was actively seeking out anything jim norton did right because i loved jim. yeah jim patrice and colin were my three guys yeah that like and then burr and louie because i learned about louie through O A. yeah but Jim Norton was the fucking man. So he, so he, yeah, he was probably the biggest. Um, in terms of solid, I'll just break it down. In terms of solid killing across the, the like consistently, consistently across time for yeah. the whole time they were up there, and the level was a tell. Yeah. So a tell. Uh, God, two thousand. There was tell. never a break. He You're never seeing, gave him a chance to to breathe. This is right after Skanks through the memories. Yeah. This I mean, Insomniac. I, I was there before Insomniac. Like right before Insomniac and then Insomniac and I mean, the general public didn't care about Skanks for the memories, but like they cared about Insomniac. So I saw him before Insomniac, during Insomniac and after Insomniac. And he was the most miserable during Insomniac. (laughs) I mean, he was like, (laughs) I mean, you've never seen a guy. There's no one that it's a show about him going and hanging out. And yeah. there's not an individual in who wants to that, do that less. <laughs> that does not want to hang out with anybody except comics and talk about jokes. Exactly. And so now he's being bombarded by college dudes who don't know hang, comedy. Who just want to go hang. Who just want to drink as much as possible. And be like, you drink, you go shoot muskrats. Yeah. And he's like, I don't care. I know. He's like, he's, he's like quietly stabbing himself in the leg so he doesn't hurt somebody. Like, <laughs> God damn, dude. Big J tells that story about John Mayer being like, at the cellar being like, Dave, we're a couple comics and he punches the piano. He goes, we, it's <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite stories. John Mayer is like, yeah, Dave, we're just two couple comics. And he I've goes, never heard that. Oh my God. That's incredible, dude. <laughs> yeah. Did, was John serious? Yeah. yeah. That's his fault, dude. Yeah. Come on. But he didn't know. Adele's like, Adele just gets oh, so bad That's great. That. He couldn't have said that to a worse person. So consistently. Okay. Kill, so consistently and highest was a tell. Yeah. Uh, loudest was, was Norton. Um, what was the bet? What was the staff? Weekend? Yeah. You want staff? Yes. Patrice. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. 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 Uh, Patrice you. used to make me laugh so hard that I felt like I was five. Yeah. Well, you, you know, when you would you laugh giggle? so hard when you were five <laughs> yeah, that you're yeah. like, you might pee Yeah. and you like, you're, it's, it's like you're on drugs. You're so high and happy. Yeah. And he's not, I mean, he, the, the stuff he's saying is brutal, so, but I was laughing like a five-year-old. Yeah. He, I, um, I remember the last time I laughed that hard was when I watched a Harlem Globetrotter kick a basketball from half court into the net. <laughs> and I, I laughed for like 20 minutes as I was like six years old. And I was just like, I was crying with joy. I was just like, that's the, 
that's that's magic. That's magic, and that was so funny. You're and not supposed to kick a basketball. What are you doing? What are you doing? This guy's crazy. This is basketball. And you're like, ah, I couldn't. Ah, you're six and, years and, old. And I remember like, Patrice made me your laugh mom like that. Like, Julian, what is he? Go, he, you just he kid. I know. The ball. My mom doesn't know that you can't do that. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, breaking oh, the rules a little bit when you're a kid, watching an adult break the rules at all is the funniest thing. It's the best. You, you miss you. That's why you hold a banana up to your face, and a five year old is like, I, I mean, is Jerry this Carlin? Make me laugh like that. Yeah, you're like, all right, Lenny Bruce. Yeah, calm down. You're, like, this is so, you're brilliant. I used to go to after school at an athletic club. That was where I'd go, and we'd get to go swimming. And the thing that made me laugh like that was acting like you didn't see the pool and walking into <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. And you would be like, that was like, dude, if you, you could get me going with yeah. that. Act like you're so, reading a newspaper. So that's how or, funny Patrice was to me because so the, the what's funny about that as a kid yeah. is that um, you're tr- there's, no, there's no intellectualizing. No. You're just like, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> And that does happen. Yeah. And that's enough to yeah. make you go, yeah. Yeah. like, this is the most brilliant person I've ever seen. So once you're an adult and you're, like, jaded and you've seen stuff, to, to have someone be so funny with words that yeah. they can make you f- laugh on that level is, like, incredible. And yeah. there's only a few people that have ever done it, and Patrice it, is one of them. It is like you're watching a person levitate. Yeah. We're like, this is insane. Yeah. This make me, what was the, the truth? It's the truth. It's that he would tell the truth so hard oh, that, dude. that it would like, you'd feel it in your stomach while you're laughing. It's just incredible. I've that told- stuff about the, fr- he was the first person to ever say, or, I don't know, ever, but like to make it funny, we love you, but we don't like you was yeah. like seeing that live uh, about women where you're like, I'm dating one of the waitresses and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you listening? To yeah. It? Are you? Do you he, see how hard I'm laughing? He. Uh, one of the funniest things where I've never heard anybody say just like that kind of honesty was um, stand up New York mm-hmm. back when Wayne was booking it uh-huh. and managing Patrice. Yeah. Um, Patrice <laughs> came in on like a Wednesday night and like put his soda up on like remember how it had the bar around yeah. the logo uh-huh. and he sits down and he looks at this guy and I've told the story before but he looks at this guy in the front row and he goes, "You from Europe?" And You're guy, from Europe. And this guy just Europe's goes, so big. This guy goes, I am. I'm from like Norway. How did you know that? This is like maybe 20 people in the crowd. Yeah. Patrice goes, yeah, I could tell. American white boys got a lot more life behind their eyes. <laughs> he goes, he goes, you European white boys, you just dead like that. The There's guy, so much history. It was so funny. I was oh, like, wow. he just called that. He was just like in that moment seeing someone that's lived... So like they, he just knew that. Yeah. He it wasn't like he kind of guessed, but in like a yeah. I know I'm right. Well, he was probably also wearing pumas with no socks. Probably. But, yeah. <laughs> but, he uh, probably also could he could hear all the foreskin on his dick. Yeah. He he also had a little satchel. Yeah. What was the weekend working at oh, stress? But I just want to say so the the my version of that for Patrice was he did crowd he was doing crowd work and uh that's a word that's a bad way to put it it wasn't yeah. he what he did was not crowd work no. But he, he talked to the audience. Yeah. He was killing. And then this one table of uh, five middle-aged women, four of them were laughing and one of them wasn't. And you know he, that that kind of stuff just bugs him, you know, because yeah. he didn't care for women. Yeah. And so if one of them wasn't yeah, laughing. If you ever listen to the Black Phillips show. Yeah. His advice, pretty tough. It's if tough, a, yeah. If you're a lady, don't listen to that one. Like you take it with a grain of salt. But anyway, so he, uh, he goes, what's the matter, sweetie? You know, that whole thing. Yeah. And um, he basically breaks it down over a course of about two minutes. He's talking to her. And then he goes, oh, y'all been friends so long. She just still comes out. But you haven't liked her in 20 years. And when he said that, they laughed so hard because they were not ready to hear that from a stranger. Right. And you could tell that laughter where you couldn't help it. They couldn't stop it in time because I bet they, in the threads, I bet in the texting, Ugh. it was like, Honey. Gina, Gina, oh, why do we got to bring Gina? Why? That, and only they knew about it. Ugh. And then Patrice calls it out, right? Ugh. So they laugh before they can stop themselves. And that woman got up, saw the truth on all their faces, got up and walked out. And he goes, good get out of here. They've been wasting 20 years of their, you owe them 20 years of no fun oh, because, and so oh. or 20, you owe them 20 years of fun. You can't give them back anyway. So she walked out and the whole crowd's cheering as this lady walks out oh. 
And it's like he just broke up a 20 year friendship also, with one line. He also might have pushed a woman to suicide. Yeah, I know. If you're like my close group of but friends. But no one's going to miss her. <laughs> yeah. Good luck so, getting a fucking post on social media about that. I know. That's insane. So that's the kind of stuff. So I've he, also seen him break up marriages for real. But it was less dramatic than that. I'll never forget that. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, working with the stress factory like that, when you're that young and coming up in comedy, yeah. you're just like watching. Oh, so the whole reason I brought this up was because I was so young and I wanted to get into stand up and I was like, I'll work there and then I'll, and then I'll get on stage. And then I, and then it's, and then it's tough crowd every weekend. And you're like, like the worst one was Rich Voss. Like that's how good everyone was. Yeah. So you're like, and Voss murders, Mar Voss murders. Yeah. And I love Voss. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I'm just saying that cause that's what they used to say. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but that is a, that's a feeling of like um, so i was like i'm not getting up there like it was it seemed but, impossible but then it became your job well what happened was uh vinny was like i thought you got this one night after work vinny was like i thought you got this job so you could get on stage and i was like yeah you know i'm still working it out like uh yeah, yeah. writing i'm writing some stuff yeah, getting yeah. some ideas That's down always the thing. yeah and he goes you're going on tomorrow night and I was like, oh, this is, you know, this is a busy show. You know, I used to seat the room. Like, right, we, the numbers aren't good. We shouldn't do that. What are we going to do in section four? I know. Uh, I, should, I mean, I should do my job first. There's two ten tops. Let and he goes, you're going seven. on. And the whole next day, I had, a, I had a, like a full day panic attack. And, uh, and it was two sold out shows. 400 people, Friday, Saturday, which I had to seat them, get them to sit where they don't want to sit, and then get up there in the t-shirt that says Stress Factory oh, and be yeah. funny. And... Uh, that bomb was so bad. I'd never been in theater. I'd never held a microphone. I'd never, I'd never talked in front of- That was your first set? It was my first set. You'd first time I mic? ever got on stage. First time I ever got up in front of people and spoke. That is insane. Was a sold out Thea Vidal show on a Friday night. And uh, it was, first of all, I was kind of, I felt like I was kind of blacked out up there. I mean, I was sober, but I was like, I couldn't um, see anything. Yeah. I couldn't look up. I, I remember seeing the uh, the wood grain of the stage because I was just like looking at the ground. I was shaking. The feeling in the room was definitely, why did they make this kid do this thing yeah, he doesn't yeah. want to do? Yeah. Stop, stop. He's stop, already, stop. He's already dead. Yeah. From yeah. the Simpsons. And then after the first show, he was like, You're, you got to do it again the second show. I don't even remember that. I like my, and then that night, my whole identity, my whole life was I'm funny. That was what I had. And then when it gets and then I was up. like, 800 people just agreed oh. for 10 full minutes. Oh, and you had to serve them. I didn't have to serve them. Okay. I was I would seat the room and so I would you, bust the tables, but oh. I did not bust tables that night. I, I fucking hid. Yeah. Yeah. After that, when you fail at your, they wouldn't job. even let me take their trash. They're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Do I don't what? even want you touching my trash. When I, when I was waiting tables and you drop a tray. Yeah. And then you'd have to go back to that table and you're like. I was telling Katie, this happened. We had like a large 18 top and then I worked at a Mexican restaurant at Dos mm. Caminos and they had these salsa trios. Yeah. And someone was like, hey, take the salsa. Wait, trios, just so people know, that's three. That's three. Yeah. That's Spanish for three. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm cultured. Yeah. But you work there, people don't know. You forget that people don't know. I'm tossing a little casual Espanol at you. <laughs> but they were like, take this. It was like this one of the big food runner trays. Uh -huh. And they're like, hey, uh, take salsa out for the 18 top. And so I had this big food runner tray, which was pretty heavy, and I'm holding it with one hand and I'm passing out salsas, and it tips, and one of the salsas goes down. This is a lunch. This is a business lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, down, so there's no time. Down a woman's back. Perfectly. It, it hit perfectly on her neck, the verde <laughs> salsa. And I was like, no, no, no. But I'm holding a big You're tray. You're like, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I got to put this tray down, and then I'm just like, I am so sorry, but the feeling of... It happens. The manager comes. Everything's taken care of. But then you got to go back. You got to go back. And be like, can I get you another iced tea? <laughs> <laughs> can I get you another iced tea? And she's like, no. no. I don't want to. Why are you still here? But failing in front of people and then having to go back. That's like that scene it. in Private Ryan when he's watching his friend get stabbed slowly, but yeah. he can't move because he's so scared. Yeah. And, and the then guy, and these guys pushing it in yeah, his chest. Slowly. Yeah, slowly. And he's like, shh. But yours is worse because at least that guy didn't have to go back. No, he didn't have to see the German guy and be like. <laughs> at least his friend was murdered. Yeah, he didn't have to check in with the German and go, "Are those? Is that quesadilla all right?" And he goes, "I." I, I br he brings him another friend, <laughs> soldier. Yeah, he goes, Here you go, sir. Dude, it was that those feeling uh, that feeling of failing like that, and then. So that night, I go home. It must have been the summer because not all my roommates were there, and I remember I couldn't even because my identity. 
I mean, it was a dark night of the soul, dude. I was yeah. like, so I have to figure something else out? Yeah. Like, can, can you I imagine jump? a whole you're part of your, per- like, just a whole part of your personality isn't real after yeah. when you're 20, you find yeah. this out? Yeah, being young and that being your first experience yeah. of doing standup is brutal. Yeah. Especially so when you're watching. I all slept the- in my roommate's bed because I couldn't sleep in my own stuff. I was oh. just like, uh, and I remember I drank a, uh, I was drinking a handle of vodka to, to, until I could pass out because I was just like so devastated and then um, it didn't get much better for a while but really? he kept, but Vinny kept putting me back up credit to him I know he knew you were funny he was letting me bomb that hard in his club you know which means th- there's got to be some sort of a little bit of sociopath in there he, like, but, uh, he goes uh, put him up again yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 Definitely, he goes, he's probably like, you gotta watch this. He goes, no, yeah, watch, no. <laughs> watch him. So then, eat shit. it didn't start to turn until because he was bringing me up to do guest spots. Oy. It didn't start to turn until he let me go up first and do the crowd work, and then I could be myself. Well, and because I, I could not write a joke for my life, dude. But then you get in, and then you're emceeing. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. Once show. then, I got my legs a little bit. And- 